are these people? Going to talk about the Iron Dome for a bit. Um, we, you probably might have heard about the Iron Dome as kind of this impenetrable castle of a defense system that Israel has to counter any attacks from their neighbors, mostly from Iran. Yeah, um, Syria at, too. At least that's how it's reported usually and how, you know, especially within the last few years, there's been issues as far as funding the Iron Dome, which has been kind of problematic with the squad in particular. Um, but in contrast to what you might think, it's actually, as you said, uh, more of a paper tiger in terms of how truly of much defense as it claims to be, which I also feel kind of relates to a breaking story that broke yesterday. I'm sure there's a kind of a correlate. Again, this is my speculation, but um, I don't think that was going to be too far off the mark, though. Uh, but we'll get into that later. So uh, let's talk about the Iron Doom, shall we, or the myth of it thereof. So this article uh, investigation was done by Robert Inklakesh. Inklakesh, uh, yeah. He's been doing the damn thing at MinPress News as of late. Mm -hmm. uh, where he reports on the myth of the Iron Dome, the costly lie behind Israel's impenetrable, in quotes, defense. So he reports, Israel's highly touted Iron Dome air defense batteries have been misfiring and causing civilian casualties in recent weeks, sparking controversy. The air defense system has consistently presented problems, including damaging infrastructure, proving costs ineffective, and failing to engage the number of targets claimed by the Israeli military. At August 6, reports emerged that a Hezbollah drone attack on the Israeli-led city of Nariva, I guess I would say it, results in, resulted in civilian casualties, leaving 13 wounded and one critically injured. However, the Israeli military quickly clarified that the munition had hit the Route 4 highway was actually a misfired Temnia missile from a nearby Iron Dome air defense battery. The incident followed another high-profile event about two weeks earlier when the projectile exploded in the Syrian Dews village of Rajal Sams, killing 12 children and injuring dozens more. While Israel blamed Hezbollah and attempted to drum up sectarian strife, the Lebanese group rejected any involvement. Locals from the illegally occupied village pointed fingers at the Iron Dome system, claiming that they saw the missile flying from the Mount Hebron military site. An Israeli paramedic also told Al, Al Arabi, Arabi TV reporter that the Sharpenel belonged to an Iron Dome missile. Despite consistent reports of Iron Dome misfires causing infrastructure damage, a notable case occurred near Tel Aviv in November. A video capturing a Tamiya missile performing a 180-degree loop and exploding near a civilian area. In early December, the Israeli military announced an investigation into the malfunction after the video went viral online. The last investigation into such a malfunction was in May of this year, of last year, highlighting a recurring issue in nearly every conflict involving the Iron Dome. Oh, there you go. So, any thoughts? <clears throat> um, not necessarily, not yet. Um, I mean, figuratively triggering false alarms. We know this, mm -hmm. right? It's also caused the deaths of people in and of itself, similar to how uh, Ukrainian missiles recently, right? Right. Um, you know, it hit. Didn't it hit like a soccer match or something like that that they I, tried I to claim so. was Hamas, but was actually their own missile defense systems? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, yeah, rate right at four, four, at best four or five percent, which you've also been seeing. Keep in mind, you have Iran has hypersonics, correct? Mm hmm. Right, yes. which the Iron Dome can't do nothing about, like at all already. Right, they have yet to use them. What have they been doing, Colin? Slow rolling drones, 
right? Where, and they just overload the system with very cheap, like, drones. Right, that, right. That's the thing. They haven't been doing really anything yet. Right. In as far as actual, like... And then they send a couple missiles. So they send the drones in, right? And then the missiles come after the slow rolling, like, drone swarm, right? Right. And, like, then there's no missiles left, which these missiles right. for the Iron Dome, I'm sure we're going to get to, are fucking pricey. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the... right. Well, not even with the, I wouldn't say the sneak attack, but the, I call it the warning shot back yeah. in, what was it, May. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> like, the fact that, we had to support them, you know, right. and and I think we made that a call back then. It was kind of like, uh, shouldn't the Iron Dome be able to take care of all of this? But yet they needed Jordan to assist. They needed like the U.S. to come in and assist for essentially nothing, not nothing, but like, yeah, you know, they didn't do the, the damage was fairly minor because they were being very careful. Well, a minor. Careful. But you know, but that kind of shows even then that kind of like, what the hell is the Iron Dome there for? Like, if it yeah. was supposed to be this state of the art, like, well, this is the this is the thing that Russia has been saying about our equipment, and China has been saying about our equipment, right? Um, you know what I mean? Where it's it's they they literally say it's about warfare has changed where. It's now about how economical can you do it? Right. Right? How many, like, with less in resources? Words, in other words, cheap. <laughs> yes. Like, effective <laughs> and cheap. And I hate to tell you, homie, but those AKs, I know, I know our nice M16s and ARs are great. Trust me, I know. But, like, AKs work real well as well, you know? Like... Their their cheap drones work just as as good as our expensive ones, right? Like this is what I've been trying to tell people. It's about doing it cheaply, right? Mm -hmm. They've talked about this with American tanks, right? It think about how you make money with. We are upselling our own equipment. We're throwing tons of fancy stuff they don't need, right? It's like a car salesman, you know. Like you're you're getting the undercoat that's not necessary. You're getting, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Like, it's uh, this is what it is now. So the Iron Dome costs thousands of thousands of dollars, our money, to run. You know, like and and it's designed by, uh, you know, our people. Made tons of money off all of it. Um, but anyway, you were saying? Uh, another major issue with the Iron Dome is its infrequent triggering by false alarms leading to unexpected explosions that sh sh shook civilians and set off sirens. During the May 2021 war between Gaza and Israel, the Iron Dome failed to counter large barrages of concentrated rocket fire. This failure prompt, prompted the U.S. to urge the deployment of more batteries as a reinforcement strategy. According to the Times of Israel, the deaths of two Israeli women in Ashkelon during the 11th Day War may have, caused, may have been caused by an Iron Dome technical malfunction. While Israel claims that its Iron Dome air defense system intercepts between 90 to 99 percent of targets, Professor Emeritus Theodore Postal of the Massachusetts of MIT offers a stark different assessment. I would say that the intercept rate is at best four or five percent. Postal said in an interview with the Boston Globe last October. He yeah. added that the interception rate is likely as low as one percent. Postal is known for debunking the effectiveness of the U.S. Patriot missile system. After analyzing evidence, he found that the air defense system had managed to shoot down zero to one Iraqi Scud missiles fired at Saudi Arabia and Israel. 
Okay. Also concluded extensive research on the Iron Dome and its effectiveness during the 2012 and 2014 wars between Gaza and Israel. He concluded that the intercept performance of Iron Dome appears to pro be probably 5% or less. This conclusion was reached despite a range of upgrades to the air defense system between its first use in 2011 and 2014. While the Iron Dome is often hailed as a near impenetrable air defense system by both pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian political commentators, its history and independently evaluated effectiveness suggests otherwise. Despite its reputation, the Iron Dome does not appear to be as effective as claimed. The reason of its high praise is similar to that of every air defense system on Earth. They are marketed to outshine competitor systems. Uh-huh. Zoom out, please. The Iron Dome, a profit product of Rafael Advanced Defense Systems and Israel Aerospace Industries, IAI, utilizes Tamir missiles co-developed by the Raytheon Division of U.S. Defense, Como Gloria RTX. Israel has consistently claimed that an interception rate of over 90% since the system's development in 2011, a figure that has remained unchanged despite numerous upgrades and amendments over the past decade. A significant downside, aside from malfunctions causing civilian casualties and infrastructure damage, is the cost of using the system. In 2012, the Iron Dome was upgraded to use smaller and more cost-effective missiles due to high expenses associated with its operation. This has been a recurring issue as the system combats rockets that only cost a few hundred dollars to produce, while the cost of a single Iron Dome missile is approximately $50,000. While many air defense systems are oversold by the military industrial complex and numerous nations publish unrealistic information about their effectiveness, the issue in Israel may run deeper. It's such a small country, the Israeli public has been given systems like Iron Dome to believe in, a system that makes them feel safe and in which they, can feel, they feel they can put their faith. During past conflicts with armed resistance in the Gaza Strip, the relative, relative ineffectiveness of the munitions fired towards Israelis has supported the claim that the Iron Dome intercepts over 90% of incoming projectiles. However, as the Israeli military now confronts more sophisticated weapons from groups like Hezbollah, the famed air defense system appears to be taking a blow to its credibility. Mm -hmm. um, I shall stop there for a second, but any thoughts? Um, no, nope. sounds so, about like what we were saying. Yeah. So, so, so as I said, the following is probably is speculation on my part, but as I said, not too far off the mark. So given what we now know about the Iron Dome and basically being shit more yeah. really. Um, so Yasha Ali tweeted this out yesterday. This was breaking news yesterday. Uh, so, so U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has approved the sale of $20 billion in military hardware and weapons to the Israeli government. Uh, Israeli Defense Minister of Defense Yoav Gallant writes, Thank you to uh, Secretary of Defense Austin and Secretary Blinken for advancing critical force buildup initiatives that assist Israel in developing and maintaining is qualitative military edge in the region. This includes incorporating F-151As into the IAF fleet of fighter aircraft and providing critical ammunition to ensure Israel's capacities and security. As we fight to defend Israel on seven different fronts, your message of support and commitment to Israel's security are clear. So you can kind of see there what uh, some of the toys yeah. uh, that they will be getting. Um, uh, uh, Tiger, God, what are you um, gonna... uh, What? I just, I got spooked by the vile demons on my screen. Oh. Um, <laughs> no? Uh, so Z Zane Zeiger uh, tweeted out, how are Biden and Harris working around the clock for a ceasefire? when what I just mentioned was just approved today. So in other words, this 20... 18.8 billion dollars, Jesus Christ. 
Like, right. Billion with a b. Right. But Kamala cares, y'all. Um. So let's uh-huh. go into this a little bit more. Uh, this is from the AP. Ugh. Uh, where Tara Cop writes: U.S. approves twenty billion in weapon sales to Israel amid threat of wider Middle East war. So she writes, the U.S. has approved $20 billion in arms sales to Israel, including scores of fighter jets and advanced air-to-air missiles, the State Department announced yesterday. Congress was notified of the impending sale, which includes more than 50 F-15 fighter jets, advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles, and rams, uh, 120 milliliter tank ammunition, and high-explosive mortars and tactical vehicles and comes at a time of intense concern that Israel may become involved in a wider Middle East war. Mm. However, the weapons are not expected to get to Israel anytime soon. They are contracts that will take years to fulfill. So They might need a peer. <laughs> get those in there. Well, it's to ensure that Israel will get their weapons regardless of who is president. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I think from what I read, like some of these first toys will not arrive in Israel until I think around maybe 2027, I think. Jesus Christ. So. You minis, do your thing, would you? You know, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, but anyway, much of what is being sold is to help Israel increase its military capacity in the long term. Those are going to have to the be United by States- boat. So orcas. <laughs> Uh, you know you know what to do you know the united states is committed to the security of israel and it is vital to u.s national interests to assist israel to develop and maintain a strong and ready self-defense capacity capability sorry this proposed sale is consistent with those objectives the state department said in the release on the sale the Biden administration has had to balance is its continuous support for israel with a growing number of calls, calls from lawmakers and the U.S. public to curb military support there due to the high number of civilian deaths in Gaza. It has curbed one delivery of 2,000-pound weapons amid continuing airstrikes by Israel in densely populated civilian areas in Gaza. The contracts will cover not only the sale of 50 aircraft to be produced by Boeing. It will also produce, include upgrade kits for Israel to modify if existing fleet of two dozen F-15 fighter jets with new engines and radars, among other upgrades. Mm. The jets comprise the biggest portion of the $20 billion in sales, with the first deliveries expected in 2029. So I got that wrong, but all the same. Who doesn't? Um, yeah, um. So, so again, this is speculation, but going back to the Iron Dome for a second, I think just... It's crappy rate of success in terms of actually striking down missiles might actually be on purpose mm-hmm. in terms of actually giving justification for us and any other Western country who wants to do their bidding to go with the guys of, oh, we need to improve it. Oh, we need to upgrade it. Oh, we need more weapons, you know, just so like there you can ensure the illusion of safety uh, for Israel, uh, but also making the military comp- military industrial complex money so that they're able to provide these contracts to Israel. And as they said, they're not going to get these within the next five years, at least among the first, you know, fighter jets. So basically all of this says is that for those of you who think that Kamala is actually, you know, sincere in terms of, um, actually doing something around this war. I mean, you can argue that this is on Biden and she may not have anything to do with this directly, but she's still involved in this. And I've yet to hear her mentioning anything regarding this um, 20 billion gift that we're giving to Israel, again, with our money, um, for the sake of basically starting World War III. Yep. Um, and you know who else agrees with me? Uh, I'm sure quite a few. 
um but particularly yeah. this lady yeah um, this lady who while we've had our issues with her yes has actually spoken out correctly in regards to what's been happening in gaza so what like you know that you that shit is not necessarily going so well yes the bare actually the bare minimum that. the bare minimum position is yes. now being easier to take you mean yes, yes. um gotcha um so if you want to zoom out so this is from this clip was clipped from case study tv yeah uh so here is joy reed again actually speaking sense in one of the rare moments that she actually does speak sense towards what the hell we're doing <laughs> Early Saturday, an Israeli airstrike hit a school serving as a shelter in Gaza, killing at least 100 people and wounding nearly 50 others, according to Palestinian health authorities. On the same day as the strike, Vice President Kamala Harris condemned the loss of civilian life. Yet again, there are far too many civilians who have been killed. I mean, Israel has a right to go after the terrorists that are Hamas. But as I have said many, many times, they also have... Um, I believe an important responsibility to avoid civilian casualties. Uncommitted and anti-war voters see a reset with Harris on Israel and Gaza. Her language is different, capable of moving the needle and gaining favor with some of the voters who rejected President Biden over his stance on the region. But language is not enough. This was a school serving as a shelter for refugees of war, attacked during morning prayers. Witnesses said children, women, which is a war crime, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like, not, let's not even talk about, like, the, this is a war crime. Like, granted, even if you made the defense of Hamas being there, and for what I heard of reports, I think Israel put up, like, somewhat around 20 people who claimed to be a Hamas. Right. Like, pretty much all of them were not. Yes. Like, three of the people that they put up were dead already. Right. Um, and like the rest were like old men, but mostly these are people who were seeking shelter in the yeah. school because they have no well, one else. I've seen them try to put up stuff where it's, you know, they, they fired from civilian infrastructure using, uh, uh like they were in civilian clothes and not in uniform. And it's like, a right. Geneva code says that a headband is enough, you know, to count as uniform, right? On top of who do you think's making their uniforms? First of all, you think that just is around? Like you bombed everything. Right. But again, like bombing schools is a war crime. We should yeah. not be sending weapons. Regardless, to, regardless if it's the it's state specifically, regardless of if it's being used for right. military installments. Regardless. Right. So like, not even the fact that like so just to kind of not stop Joy 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 and Reed right there. It's like not yeah. even the shot that they shouldn't have shot at the school at all. So but anyway, let's go back to the rest of what she said. So I, but I had to make that point because people, I think people are now forgetting, <laughs> yeah. giving the fatigue that that in of itself is illegal. Stop. That in of itself, you is violated the law. Like if Hamas was there, that's no reason to knock out a school. Yeah. Women and old people were inside sleeping and that the school was hit without an evacuation warning from the IDF. President Biden has faced months of public pressure to cut off the supply of weapons to Israel amid its war on Gaza, which has killed about 40,000 people since October. It's why the squad, all elected officials of color, are demanding a ceasefire despite being targeted for removal from office by staunch supporters of the Netanyahu government and the ongoing bombardment of Gaza. The world is on edge right now, and rightly so. The U.S. is sending more troops to the Middle East to bolster defenses as Israel braces for an attack by Iran. So far, Vice President Harris has shown herself to be better positioned than President Biden to bring the party together on this issue. 
But we have to remember, Harris is still the vice president serving in the Biden administration. So her policy, should it differ from Biden's, isn't anything that she can implement now. Though it's absolutely fair for people to ask, why are we giving bombs to Israel? And would she keep that policy in place as president? These questions will surely be visible during the Democratic National Convention next week. And how the party answers could impact the election. Not to mention the lives of so many Palestinians who have suffered for much too long. For God's sake, this needs to end. And that is tonight's readout. Any questions? Yeah. No, I don't have any questions. Do you? No, not necessarily. <laughs> um, well, let's hope. I know that we have a few folks in the space who are going to be heading to Chicago next week. We ain't. But it'll be very interesting to see. I'm sure there's going to be protests there. I'm also sure that there's going to be ways that the Democrat are probably going to do to negate those voices. But no, I do think that the question that Jory should be asking is something that Kamala should be asked is, what's your plan to get a ceasefire? Especially given that Israel, like, basically took out, um, you know, the Hamas negotiator. And now right. they're saying Hamas, and, and the people are like, well, Hamas is not coming to the negotiation table. Yeah, like, they made offers nine fucking times. And mm -hmm. Israel has made it a point to basically be like, we don't care. We're not interested. So why should Hamas at this point come to... I'm so, Look, I'm just speaking truth here. Like, why should Hamas bother at this point when Israel has not been working in good faith? They've already said they're not interested in a, in a ceasefire. So my thing is right now is like, you, if Israel has a right to defend itself, given what they just did to Iran... Doesn't Iran have that same right? Right? Doesn't I mean that kind of what makes sense to me, but I'm not sure about everyone else. Right. Um. But hold on. I don't know why that came up. Yeah, there we go. Um, and you probably want it like this anyway. Yeah. So I was trying to add back. Uh. We need to put that scrolling fair use stuff over things again. That would probably help too. Um, well, but I was just trying to do that while I was thinking about it. Early um, set. No, go away, Joy Reed. Um, I think that's it, right? I think that's all you have in here. Yeah, that's all I got. Cool. So, um, yeah, just switch out. You have to do this and this, and so it's not backwards. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And then you can take off the. Yeah, but but anyway, um, let us know in the comments if you are planning to go to Chicago. If since that's next week, if you don't give a damn, or more importantly, like, you know, what questions would you, if you had the option, if you had the time, if you could, ask. Vice President Harris in terms of what she's doing in terms of, you know, ending this conflict, this assault in the Middle East. And how do you feel about uh, what Inka Cash reported on regarding the Iron Dome? Uh, let us know in the chat or let us know in the comments if you're watching the clips after this. Um, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, to fight the suppression that YouTube has made clear that they are going to do for us for sure. And make sure you leave a comment. Please help us get to 3K. And don't forget to um, make sure you donate. Uh, you can go to the QR code on the screen, or you can go to the link that you see on the screen at the Kofi link. Um, or you can go to our description and you can find all the links of where you can give uh, towards the channel. Uh, and to the network. Um, I think that's it. Thank Ooh. you guys.